All right, folks, here we go. This is from quite a while back. This is from 1995, so over a quarter of a century ago. It's hard to imagine, but this was uh, right around that time that Superman had gone missing. He was a little bit AWOL, and the rest of the folks had to jump in there and take over. So you have Superboy here as part of the Superman Man of Steel. These are by Kenner. Some of the very last of the Kenner product to go out. By this point, they would have been fully owned by uh, Hasbro. I imagine we'll see that information on there. Uh, just burning out the rest of its uh, contracts. DC. But these are some Kenner products. And I want to leave that on there. We're going to leave that. Uh, we always leave that provenance. To show you. Man, that's a neat piece of history right there. Back in the day, six bucks from uh, Kmart, we'll see what it's worth now. You, you'll you'll let us know, that's how auction works. So I want you to sh see this guy up close. He is the, uh, after Superman had gone, we saw some various incarnations take over. It was uh, Rick Superman and Steel and all those. And this is Superboy with his black leather jacket looking all cool. This was the idea. I'm going to walk you through the uh, the condition. This is a condition report. A little bit dusty, typical shelfware, and slight little bit of crushing on the bubble. Do you see that? But otherwise, that bubble is tight on the card. It's not particularly yellow. It's starting to fog a little bit. It's starting to get a little bit foggy, but that's about it. That grazing effect that you have sometimes. Uh, we'll see the, the card. A little bend. A little bend on the sides, but... Major uh, tears, scuffs, rips, like that. Overall, your, your typical amount of shelfware. So a pretty neat figure. Hard to find if you're looking to complete your mid-90s uh, Superman collection. You're going to want to grab this one. This is Superman Man of Steel, Superboy from Kenner. Check this out, folks. From 1996, this is Lex Luthor from Superman, uh, the Man of Steel series. This comes off uh, via Kenner. At that point, Hasbro, really, but Kenner. This comes from Clover. I don't recall. Is Clover... Uh, Clover was a, uh, like, Hills or Ames, uh, which are sadly no longer with us. Does anybody know if Clover is still with us? Either way, we leave this on there just to give you... I, I personally, I love these. I love when we get uh, ones that have stickers from department stores like Ames, like Hills, ones that are no longer with us. I think that just adds so much to the history of these. Uh, maybe you disagree, and if so, you can certainly get rid of that yourself with some Goo Gone or some lighter fluid, but I just think that's fantastic. You may disagree. We'll throw in the size marker right here so you get an idea of exactly how large he is. He's roughly that size, so a little bit bigger than, for example, his uh, other Kenner figures that would have predated this. A little bit larger than four inches, I think. Maybe not. It's hard to tell where his foot ends exactly. Yeah, maybe about four and a half inches. Probably, if I had to take a guess, right around the size of the um, Sergeant Savage line of action figures Hasbro was putting out. Uh, the G.I. Joe Extremes, I bet you he'd go very well with that. And speaking of extreme, look at this. What are these things right here? Well, they're a squirting hornet, of course, attack jetpack. So let's flip them over. Let's see what that is. No, I don't think we want to see what that is. That is crazy. So it turns them into a giant hornet. Um, was there something in the uh, animated series, perhaps, that explains this away? I, I don't know. Or was it just from the minds of whatever, whatever insanity was going through the folks at Kenner's heads? Um, either way, it's pretty neat. I like the gimmicks. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. I don't know. But I'm just going to walk you through here, show you the back of this. It's got... Typical shelfware. Squawk at there. Particularly major. I'm going to show you the bubble. A little bit of darkening, but overall fairly clear. Not a lot of yellowing on that. Discoloration. Let's show you Lex himself. Looking like a younger Lex. This almost looks like uh, something from the... Like a bad guy out of the uh, Spider-Man animated series around that time, if I had to take a guess. And then those crazy squirting... Wasp jets or hornet, hornet jets. And then we'll show you a little bit more of the shelfware. So a little bit of a crease right there. 
fact, a double crease on it, one right near the top of the bubble, and then again, top, a little bit of a, uh, what probably caught the uh, shelf as somebody was taking it. I had to take a guess. And then just a little bit of delamination right there. But overall, pretty neat piece. You can't have a collection of Superman without a Lex Luthor as a bad guy. So head on over to thebigtoyauction.com. You can leave your pre-bids on this. You can take, uh, you can look at the photos, ask questions. You can read the description, etc. Either way, you're going to want to put this in your collection. This is the Lex Luthor Superman Man of Steel. Enter. Here we go. All right, from Kenner, the good folks at Kenner, this is Superman Man of Steel version of Laser Superman. Again, uh, went through some changes. Superman went through some changes in the uh, that part of the 90s, the mid-90s. There is Tussle with Doomsday. This is a version of Superman. Or the uh, electric version, I believe. And like a lot of figures from that time, I'm going to show you as we talk about it. Uh, let the light play off the card so you get an idea of the condition. That's why we do condition reports. Like a lot of Kenner figures at that time, they had some gimmicks to them. And this is no exception. He's got these crazy guns and stuff. They would bring these back in uh, the late 90s, early 2000s with some of those Justice League figures. And to tell the truth, I like them. I like that had a more animated look to it than this, but nice nonetheless. So let's see, a little bit of damage right here. Uh, just a slight bend in that card. Not the worst thing ever. Um, typical amounts of shelf wear on the back, waviness, some bending, but I do want to point out there's a crease to this bend right here. It is creasing right there. A little bit of lamination. There you go. Of course, Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man, of course, Superman needs a giant bazooka. And we'll see just a little bit of waviness on the card there. And then JTAG has some stress marks where it has bent. But otherwise, pretty good. The uh, the bubble is nice and tight on that card. Never been removed, never been uh, displayed, never been taken out of the packaging. We leave that for you to do if you win it. How do you win it? You head on over to thebigtoyauction.com. Leave your pre-bids right now, whatever you think it's worth. You let us know. Somebody else thinks you're wrong, they'll outbid you. We can come back during the live auction event and defend your bids in real time. Uh, that's the best way of getting hold of this piece. This is a Superman Man of Steel, Laser Superman, Enter.